Hello, I'm Michael Novak, and welcome to Philharmonic First Fridays at Four, a series of musical programs featuring members of the Santa Maria Philharmonic in unique and intimate settings throughout the county. Today, we are at the beautiful Presquillo Winery here in the Santa Maria Valley. This is a wonderful venue for outdoor and indoor events. We'll be going inside for today's performance by a very special member of our orchestra. I'm delighted to introduce to you the harpist of the Santa Maria Philharmonic, Catherine Lineker. <laughs> with the Santa Maria Philharmonic. We are so happy to be here today at Presquillo Winery in this gorgeous, gorgeous setting um, and so lucky that it is right here in Santa Maria. This first piece that you'll hear is Hatchas. Uh, it was composed in the 17th century, so we're going a little bit early. Uh, it was composed by Lucas Ruiz de Rabias, and he was a Spanish harpist uh, and composer for the lute and guitar. Asturias by Isaac Albanese. It has become a famous solo piece, um, but it was actually written as a prelude to Cantos de España. Uh, it was originally written for piano, which I myself didn't even know because the guitar version of it has become so famous, um, and it has actually become one of the most important works for classical guitar. It was originally written in 1892, uh, and this arrangement in particular that I'll be playing today is arranged by Linda Wood and Suzanne McDonald, who is my former harp teacher from Indiana University. <laughs> Thank you. 
talk a little bit about the harp now. Today I'm playing a full-size concert grand pedal harp. There are two main kinds of harps, pedal harps, which have pedals at the bottom, and lever harps, which are generally smaller, and they have little levers at the top of each string to change the pitch. Now, I have to say, the number one question I always get after a performance when meeting people is, what's up with those pedals? Are they like a piano? <laughs> and the answer is no, they're not like a piano at all. <laughs> it's totally different. Uh, so the modern double action pedal harp was invented by Sebastian Erard, was patented in 1810, and it has seven pedals, one for each note, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and three levels for each pedal, flat, natural, and sharp. These pedals that are below, I will demonstrate, um, are connected to rods that go up through the column, which is hollow, and into the action. And what happens is, when I change the D pedal, for example, all the Ds on the harp will change. Um, they will change from flat, and then I change a pedal, to natural, to sharp. So each of these pronged discs will change, and uh, it will shorten or lengthen the length of the string in order to create those accidentals. If you think of the strings like, a, like the white keys on a piano, uh, the pedals are kind of like the black keys allowing us to play sharps and flats and uh, everything in between. Uh, because of the many, many combinations, as you can imagine, that we can play on the harp, uh, this brings me to the thing that harps are most famous for, glissandos. Most people, when they think of harps, they think of, oh, that, that beautiful thing that plays that strumming stuff, right? It's called a glissando, um, and no... Uh, not only angels play them. <laughs> um, so there are tons of fun things we can do with glissandos, um, and I'm going to demonstrate a couple different effects. So regular glissando. <laughs> we will take you to a completely different place. Uh, it is the first movement of Sweet Galactique by Caroline Lizot, titled Exosphere, and it was written in 2000. I'd love to read the program notes for you um, as written by the composer herself. Exosphere. Atmospheric layer approximately 1,000 kilometers deep where the lightest molecules escape the effect of gravity and reach the interplanetary space. The substance is built in the low register of the harp, in the earth, as if we had taken a clod of mud and extracted the water from it, and followed its molecular cycle through several transformations it experiences in the atmosphere. Musically, an ascending feeling, free of gravitational forces, is clearly presented.
next piece is Fire Dance by David Watkins. It was written in 1960 in London. Uh, David himself was a well-known harpist, and so this spicy piece is extra fun for us harpists and use some really special um, techniques. This is what the composer says about it. A piece which evokes the exciting ritual dances of South America. The style of this dance was inspired by the sound of the little Paraguayan harp, where the effects are usually simple, but the rhythmic impulse very strong. <laughs> 